hello and welcome everyone and now we are going to start unit 2 as well as unit 4 because when i looked at the content of unit 2 and when i saw the rest of the unit the content of unit 4 was damp proofing whereas i have to do waterproofing treatment in unit 2 so what i have done i have combined both of them together in these lecture series and uh, there is not much difference in waterproofing treatment and dam proofing so in the coming video lecture series i have clubbed the content of unit 2 and unit 4 in the next slide i will show you the difference between the waterproofing and dam proofing but before that it is very important to know about the types of damping now damping is something which we all must have encountered in some or other form in the place of our living and damping does not only affect the structure from externally but it also affects internally if the damping is left untreated then it will not only affect the life of a structure but also the health of the people or the occupants living in the building so every one of us usually see damping in different parts of our home but even after seeing such an effect of damping, when we do not know the cause behind it or the sources of damping, then we can't address those issues. And due to which the living condition in the home become uncomfortable, unsanitable and unserviceable. Now even before explaining this topic systematically, many people use their common sense to make their structure damp proof. And there are various tricks that they use in their construction of homes like using slopes on the roof and trying to seal the plasters and the gaps between the door and the wall or the window and the wall and providing a good passage of rainwater from the roof to the ground. People avoid condensation inside their home by providing proper aeration and ventilation just like in the bathroom we provide some opening like in kitchen we provide exhaust fans while cooking beyond it and in those rooms which are very wet or very humid we use machines like humidity absorbers or even the common windows and doors and if we allow the sunlight to come in there is a lot more chances that we avoid damping to occur inside the home now sometimes we can avoid the penetration of rainwater from the roof by providing the missing tiles there so these are the common and simple techniques by which we can avoid water to ingress inside our structure because water is something which can trespass and can cause a severe damage inside the structure I don't know how much of you know about the corrosion of reinforcement bars. Because This is because when the bars come in contact with water and how does water come inside the concrete? Because concrete has got certain permeability and when water somehow reaches to the reinforcement bar, it corrodes and when the cross section of bar reduces due to rust formation, then the strength of beam or the column reduces significantly. So that's why waterproofing and the damp proofing is very very important. Now it says what is the difference between waterproofing and damp proofing. See both the terms have proofing. Now where you have heard the term proof in the bulletproof jackets you have heard that those jackets avoid the entry of bullet from outside to the inside. Okay, so similar kind of proofing jacket here we are trying to make our structure waterproof or damp proof. Now both things have a slight difference. Waterproofing means proofing of the structure from the rainwater mainly. Okay, whereas damp proofing is the proofing of the structure from the water coming through the capillary actions. Now for waterproofing definition goes as the treatment given to the structure to prevent leakage of water or the rainwater you say 
from external surfaces and those surfaces can be the exterior walls or the terrace roofs and such type of treatments comes under the category of waterproofing so we will be studying different types of treatment or measures for waterproofing now when we are discussing this topic of waterproofing the ad of dr fixit must be coming in your mind and we will be discussing that also now as for the definition of damp proofing goes it says that it is the treatment again given to the structure to keep the walls mainly the interior walls floors and basement dry this treatment of keeping the structure dry is very very important because if our structure gets wet then there are good chances that it will be attacked by termites and rodents so let us discuss something about the background of building material of a structure and the most widely and effectively used construction material today is concrete beside steel and wood now steel structures are also there and wooden structures are also there but most of the time especially in indian scenario the most widely used uh, construction material is concrete and making good concrete is very easy in laboratory and we can make good concrete cubes in ideal conditions but when it comes to the real life situations or at the site or at the field then making a good quality concrete is not so easy because there are many parameters involved in that not only the external environments but the labors and the construction methodology and the quality of uh, material that has been used in making that concrete and the knowledge and experience of persons involved in it so in brief we can say it is not possible to make concrete waterproof especially at the site now ideally the concrete is supposed to be watertight if it is done in a manner in which all the parameters are followed strictly but in practice concrete is quite porous and in this picture you can see the porous behavior of concrete so the permeability of concrete is a property of concrete yeah. now we also measure this permeability in our lab even if you go to the basement there is a equipment by which we measure the permeability of concrete so in this slide i have shown you five microscopic images first one is the entrapped void and this is on the scale 1000 micrometer to 10000 micrometer then comes the picture of crack and then you see the picture of micro crack so these cracks and micro cracks and voids are available in concrete and because of having them concrete has got the virtue of permeability now when we analyze the concrete in larger scale then we see the transition zones now in transition zone we observe there are some zone of solid there are some zones of semi solid and there are some zones of liquid and there are some zones of air and if we go on increasing the scale of microscope then we see the capillary pores in the concrete and through these capillaries water can easily pass by capillary action so these images are in the increasing scale under a microscope from 10000 micrometer to 0.01 micrometer okay so if we talk of broader meaning of waterproofing it means any system or materials which helps us in preventing ingress of water into the structure they can be classified under the heading of waterproofing now waterproofing is often a misused and misunderstood term that's why we call it a misnomer waterproofing is defined as the treatments or the measures by which we make the surface of the structure capable to prevent the passage of water under hydrostatic pressure okay see in our day to day life we see on some properties it is written that press passes are not allowed to enter now what is this press passes are the 
घुसपैठ ये एंड समटाइम्स इट इज रिटर्न ट्रेस पासर्स बिट बी सूटेड इफ इट इज अ मिलिट्री एरिया सो सिमिलरली फॉर आवर स्ट्रक्चर ट्रेस पासर इज द वॉटर एंड द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ प्रॉब्लम कॉज बाई वॉटर इज रियली सीवियर सो वाइल डिस्कसिंग दीज प्रॉब्लम कॉज बाई वॉटर वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ वाटर प्रूफिंग विच इज द इम्परवियस वैरियर डिजाइंड to prevent water entering or escaping from building structures now the first problem which is caused by water is the rotting of timber and finishes such as floor joints beams floors studs skirting architraves and frames so in especially in case of wooden uh, structures the water can do a uh, severe damage specifically if there is raining and there is sun shining because when there is alternate in the external situation sometime it is raining sometime it is in the sun sign then it is raining sun sign in that situation water really damages the structure a lot and if you talk of structure which are constantly subjected to rain like in silong where there is too much rain then in that case the structure gets less damaged okay because there is no alteration of environmental conditions okay and along with this there is also unsightly deterioration of building facade now what is building facade building facade is the face of the building and many a time building facades are created with the help of woods and those woods get slowly and slowly deteriorated Uh, which may be out of our sight so by that our entire building facade get damaged by water and we have to provide some impervious barrier to protect our facades and building elements next problem which is caused by water which i have just discussed because of permeability of concrete or the porosity of concrete what happens sometimes the water ingress inside the concrete and when it reaches the reinforcement bars it starts corroding the bars and due to the corrosion of metals such as steel reinforcement in concrete just like you are seeing in this picture steel beams lintels metal door frames everything starts rusting okay and you are seeing these four pictures here and they are in series just like you can see the stages before corrosion then build up of corrosion products and what happens in corrosion actually if you see actually when the reinforcement bars starts corroding then rusts start forming on the surface of the bar so diameter of bar also increases consequently and so is the volume of bar so what will happen if there is increase in the volume of reinforcement bar so of course there will be development of crack just like a movie hero whose uh, biceps increases so much and when he bends his hand his shirt gets teared apart isn't it in the similar fashion when the reinforcement bars volume increases there will be cracking in the concrete elements so this is the second stage of build up of corrosion products so we see small cracks developing then further corrosion and there are more cracks developing surface cracks stains and what happens eventually there is spalling occurs now spalling is a phenomena of falling off concrete from the roof or the rcc elements and because of falling of concretes the reinforcement bars gets exposed even more to the external environment so this even increases more the risk of corrosion in the bars and this eventually reduces the strength of the rcc elements also so the corrosion cycle of a steel begins with the rust expanding on the surface of the bar 
and causing cracking near the steel concrete interface this is very clear as time matches on the corrosion products build up and cause more extensive cracking until the concrete breaks away from the bar eventually causing a spalling okay and uh, we must have seen these kinds of spalling in public buildings many a times isn't it now the next problem which is seriously caused by water which you must have seen if you have visited some pgs or some poorly constructed houses so you see there are sometimes swelling of the plaster boards and when you hit on such plaster board with your hand or some tool then the sound like dub 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 comes so such swelling of plaster board is caused by the water ingressing okay now the next problem due to water ingress is also the subsequent debonding of tiles and many a time they get disaligned or even breaks into pieces and sometimes they are compressed sometimes they are swelled so this cause debonding of tiles okay now the third phenomena shown here is the blistering of paints now this type of phenomena you will see mainly near the floor on the walls even if you try to cover those uh, blistering of paints by providing some tiles still by capillary action these blistering of paints again happens above those tiles because what is the problem with water once water gets entered it wants to come out now how it will come out surely the water will raise itself through the capillary action and it will try to come out when it will cross the level of the tiles also so these types of problems cannot be avoided just by doing a patch up solution we have to address the root cause of damping and that is done by the damp proofing or the water proofing now the next problem which is caused by water is the electrical hazard and due to which there are possible chances of short circuiting of light and power points have you observed sometime what happens your cfl bulbs even after switching off starts blinking isn't it so such a type of phenomena may be because of damping okay and the next type of problem caused by water is the most serious one that is related with the health problems of the occupants it may be humans or the pets or the animals living inside the home so the health problems are mainly related with the respiratory problems okay now sometime when you enter a house where there is problem of damping you f- get a smell of rotting rotting of carpets rotting of some clothes or rotting of some books something is rotting even when there is nothing to rot so these are the serious problems which are caused by water so that's why water proofing or damp proofing is very very important to understand and that's what we are going to discuss in our video series so we will be discussing those measures very soon now let us come to the sources and causes of leakage now we have to understand what are the sources of leakage and if there are some sources of leakage then what is the cause behind those sources of leakage so let us identify few sources of leakage of water into our structure now the very first source is the subsoil water which is rising by the capillary action from the ground to the structure second source is the cracks in external plaster on the exterior walls or the roofs or between the windows and walls and between the doors and the walls then the third possible source is the growth of vegetations and the fourth source of leakage is separation gaps between partition walls and beams and the columns 
and the last source of leakage can be the expansion joints which be deliberately provide when our structure is really longer so these are the different sources of leakage of water into our structure now what has been the cause behind these sources of leakage so let us analyze them also so the first cause can be the defective structural design so either the design was not done appropriately or the person was unaware of the design philosophies okay second possible cause can be use of poor quality of construction materials third possible cause of leakage can be because of porous structure and the fourth cause can be the improper methodology of construction because methodology has to be followed which thing has to be done first that has to be done first if someone comes and he do something as per his own choice then of course the final product will sure sort have some defects and the next cause of leakage can be that we may not have provided proper slopes in the bathrooms or in the kitchens or on the terrace so these are the possible cause of leakage of water into the structure so we will be discussing more on this topic in the upcoming videos so till that stay tuned and stay safe thank you